The speaker is Ankur Gupta. Who is also a very good friend of mine. Ankur Gupta is working with Mindfest Solutions as a senior software engineer. He is an active contributor in the Jaspersoft community and he has delivered many webinars for the same. He is also one of the professional bloggers. He is also a YouTube tutorial builder. Ankur, please come on stage and glimpse into the future of business intelligence. My name is Ankur Gupta. Hello. My name is Ankur Gupta and I am a senior software engineer at Mindfire Solutions. Today, uh, in this talk, I will be telling a few things about business intelligence and which will be our next, uh, like in few years, like uh, Prabhjot has given a session on IoT. So probably this will be heading to an IoT session later on because IoT is on a bigger scale, like big data analytics, you know, there we need a real-time analytics and probably IoT is letting you do that in his excellent session for that. So now let's see the agenda for this uh, this talk. Uh, like it's all listed out here. Like this will be the breakup of my uh, here the whole talk. Show. <coughs> will be an introduction, heading into an implementation, of a, a basic implementation of uh, business intelligence in a real time frame. Then I will explain the parts, the essentials of a business intelligence software which it has to show because these are sections because if a person in a business intelligence model cannot do everything on its own. So there needs to be a divide of responsibility. So on the basis of these different different uh, points which you see as a dashboard reporting and such reporting and analytics, people generally divide out their responsibilities. Then we have our case study. There are two good case studies to uh, like exhibit the use of business intelligence into the real time frame. Then our, now there will, I will have a, a comparison with what today and tomorrow will be happening in a business intelligence. And then tools in the market and I have a small demo which I created using one of the business intelligence software that is called a Jaspersoft BI. And I will be using uh, the IBM Cloud for the same. I have hosted it on the software IBM Cloud. and. Uh, then we'll have a small QA session. So, uh, what is the participant stake for this particular talk is that uh, uh, yeah. So here you have a fair idea of a BI. What see BI in uh, nowadays is uh, used. Techies out here will be having their take on either they are on the roles like or either they are developer or managing a team which will be heading on to some moonshot innovations later on as there also you said it was said that so business intelligence as I said or say as BI now BI uh, what is a BI it's a buzzword of course like friends uh, a decade now the things have been talked about BI and people have started knowing exceptional uh, grasp onto this. So BI is essentially uh, BI is essentially delivering relevant and reliable information to the right people and uh, and at the right time basically because timing is very important when you are considering a business intelligence scenario. Then this will help us to get better decisions. And, and that too faster. <coughs> then, if, if you see, we, business intelligence can do this with the user group, our business decisions based upon uh, things like um, like uh, and analyzing any KPI or year on over. So we will see how analytics works on in the real scenario. So BI essentially takes a lot of data, a lot of raw data, either it's from an ERP or either it's driven from a, a manual Excel kind of thing but it takes a huge amount of data and it creates an actionable meaningful data out of it because 
once the data is meaningful and actionable, then it's of only you any use to us. So this was a small concept which I talked about, but essentially business intelligence is on these four main factors wherein we have a performance management, our analytics, our predictive modeling, and most, most of all data index mining. And there are a lot of other tools which essentially are important for business intelligence software, but these are the four pillars on which our intelligence works on. So, to understand BI, this is a small case study. Here we can imagine a business intelligence functioning like a grocery store. In a grocery store, when we go to a grocery store, we shop for eggs, milk, and bananas. Just an example out here. So we de we need not ask the salesman, where please tell me where the eggs I will found or where where I will find the bananas. But actually, we just head out to the grocery store. We see everything is laid out into aisles, and every aisle is labeled with the amount of the type of product which is to be found. We we we'll just go there. We pick up the stuff and we, we know it and we need not to ask anyone. So, in this manner, our grocery store which is, which is having millions of products is easy to, easy to navigate and, and easily a person cannot, without asking, he can, uh, he can simply do a shopping. Same manner, let's consider a business data. In the business data, we will, we will Having, suppose these three cases are taken, suppose we have production data, we have billable hours data, and we have a sales goal data. So, in order to get all these three data, I will have to go to three different people, collecting the information about each of these domains, and then I will, with the help of someone, compile it into one report, and that essentially I will be using as my report on this business analysis. So, summed up together, it's, it's you're taking your input as all the messy information and producing the same structure as we found in a grocery store, arranging it into different, different sections, which will be easy to navigate and easy to understand and the data is structured in that own way. So, in, in act of this, we will be able to navigate our whole data and we can find whatever we need and without any boundaries or foundations to actually understand where the data is kept. So now, what, what things we no longer have to do? We don't have to manually drop down a spreadsheet, a link spreadsheet, suppose it has a hundred pages and we, we have to really navigate to each of them to understand the things, but we need, we need not do anything of that sort. And anything, any analysis manually, like you are going through an Excel, counting the number of, uh, suppose, male and female employees, so probably you will be adding a calculation there. But actually, we can do with few clicks into any, any business intelligence software. So which is easy, easily deployable. And it's not like we need a huge infrastructure, because as we are into an open source kind of tech talk here, so it's really, it's, uh, in beginning, like in any BI tool in the market, it's generally like 80% of the things are free to community. As I am a like community uh, answer, I am I'm active on community. People ask about community, so you can really learn like most of it through the community. And if you're getting deployed onto a suppose going up on a huge platform or really uh, hunting that moonshot uh, idea of yours. So probably you can uh, go for a commercial edition, that's a that's, uh, talk. But essentially, everyone can just go and download few stuff and it can be a BI person in no time. So, so here comes the question, like generally uh, the BI which are deployed nowadays, they are for the managers and managerial level. But here, if here the employees can interact with the BI system, even to get the pay, payrolls or maybe the skill management or, or a lot of things which they can get on their own contact. 
basically it's not not limited to a manager or or to a top level person. We can easily access onto various levels. Though, uh, if you want to like limit for an employee, you know, you want to show the sales of the company. Of course, that could be done on the basis of the different users and that kind of management is there. So here, with this, the advantage coming out here is that uh, you can take the strategic decisions on uh, analyzing the historical data. Now, historical data when I refer, it's basically the years of data which you have been storing into your relational databases and which is already there, sitting idle, but we get it to work. We can analyze the trends of, suppose, if a company is a marketing company, so it will generate the leads. So which region is generating leads? Those are historical data because once we are planning the future, now there comes the another advantage that we can plan the future accordingly. Like suppose in uh, Delhi the sales are good, so we can deploy more people to generate more leads. Which whichever region is getting down, probably we can get to work there and get to deploy more people. So. So essentially, if you see this diagram, well, this is a business intelligence uh, ecosystem as we will say. Now, you see if it says helps you know the business and with a quick diagram, this I have talked about a small case study. So, so now, now we head to our second uh, topic that is on a, a bit more technical stuff because this was a very uh, general discussion we had on to just so that you just have a underlying concept on the BI. Now I will be using few flowcharts in this, so so you can just go through the flow here. So essentially, here I will talk about the past data and the future data. Now future data is what is coming inside a system. Like suppose if I have an ERP deployed the amount of new customers which are coming, a new order they are placing, those are actually the future data which we do not know yet. The past data is what we have in our system already. Past orders or past past trends. So on the basis of this, BI tools. Now BI tools is the same thing, BI, BI software or BI tools. That's, that's totally dependent upon the process we use. Either we can use a process or a technical deployment, but here I will refer it as a BI tool. So BI tool is basically connecting these two, and there it is really helps you analyze the past data, and it will allow you to improve your future inputs or outputs on based on the same past and the future data. So here. Now, what is raw data? Raw data is basically all the inputs which you are getting into your system. Now, inputs could be through an IT system. IT system here refers to an ERP, or suppose another term could be a surveys, or your if you are a uh, sales company, then probably orders and everything. Even you can have a hard copies like like if you if you can enter like Excel. Generally, people in the past have more of an Excel deployment, like suppose they have to get uh, some information from a particular region, they probably had an Excel there. So that basically transforms the whole thing put together, it comes up into a raw data. Now raw data is of no use until we transform it into a meaningful readable format. Because I, we in our world, we know the DB and we, we know some query to get the data out of the your relational system, but actually the meaningful data which we are talking about that is transformed from the raw data because raw data is actually uh, the same set of data which we have generated through our whole system. So essentially putting all of these together, now raw data is transformed into a meaningful data using the BI system and meaningful information which you have retrieved from the raw data. Actually, that is what uh, generates the company profits or company costs. 
Okay. So on the basis of the analysis on the raw data, we retrieve our sales. Sales now get in two things. Like either we can cut the cost or either we can do a scalability and we can scale it to on a larger platform pushing us to a more profit, profitable thing. So here, so either it can increase in revenue and reduce cost. Both will give part to creating more profits. Now this is just an example where a company model has been set where the raw data it had sitting into its uh, relational databases and its uh, tables. We are just pulling out and applying into a meaningful information to drive our analysis and we can get the data done. So now combining it with the first slide we did on the past and the future and business intelligence playing the role there. So this layer, this magenta layer, this marked as business intelligence. Now here you see the raw data is mentioned as the past. Its transformation is done with the help of business intelligence tool or the software which we are running or, or whatever means of business intelligence deployment is run. Then it transformed into a meaningful information producing as the future. Future is what we can't predict the sales, what, what actually we will get. But we can actually tell that what trend will it follow. Because if we have, we are set on to particular trend, then only we can say that uh, we have a parallel or we can compare things with, with the past. So, here are a few actions which the management takes. Now, management is uh, uh, I will say yeah, management is the first people, set of people who are governing the, a company or an industry. There, they will analyze this meaningful uh, information and they will devise their actions. Now, actions could be of forms like like cutting out employees. Suppose a company is going. Uh, not in, uh, companies are in profit, so it, it can't hold up a lot of uh, employees. So probably it will its action will be to cut off few people, or suppose boost up sales in a particular north region. So those are set of actions which are determined on the basis of the meaningful information which we derive from the raw data sitting in our relational system. Again, the same thing. I'm just taking a case where. It, Produce profit and stability, and again, the generated by the same meaningful information we did it from the raw data, the meaningful information. Now, converting raw data into meaningful data can be used on two approach basis. As I said, technology and on a software basis. So, process is basically a software out here. So. When, when we apply a process onto some, uh, like a BI process <coughs> onto your raw data, so these transformations generally happen in a real time scenario or in an analytical scenario. But our main goal is to analyze our data which we have ready to do into a data which will, which will help us to determine further our further steps or to success for the same institution or company. Now, this uh, business intelligence uh, deployment, actually it is not uh, like a static process. Like you, like you install your OS and it keep, keeps on running until eternity. Actually, this is not the case. Because our information is changing, our clientele is changing, our whole ecosystem of things are changing. So basically, things go advances. And accordingly, we need to modify our uh, deployment strategy and uh, how how well we are using the resources of business intelligence to produce us a data which is meaningful over the time because time is, is every time evolving. So things will be evolving in our case. Now, another object which we need to clear about this is that once now. Uh, once anybody deploys a new thing uh, in their company or ecosystem, they will think to get maximum out into minimum time. So actually business intelligence is the deployment is actually based on think that it deploys very easily and it, it, it is known for 
retrieving results faster and uh, actually doing on a bare minimum level like uh, like you, you can uh, optimize on your cost and everything you can have analytical things working in five minutes under your system so it's it's the object of any new deployment is that it produces results and data for you now comes the business performance management. Like these are three functions which actually BI does on a, on a, on a core level. Now views is what uh, <coughs> like you see at the bottom, the views of the business operation. Now this is the same thing. Now this is what we talked talk about the past and the future, uh, current and things predictive. Uh, these are three basic uh, divisions of the views. So views are basically once we have our information, then possibly we can do a view analysis as we have seen here. Then is what we uh, we say uh, business performance uh, management. Probably we know it by a term called KPI, okay? key performance indicators. So these KPIs actually uh, are responsible for actually getting us trends. Once we have a particular KPI, like suppose in a company which is growing, the revenue analysis, like there are two kinds of revenue analysis we have heard of, like month over month or year on year. So these are small, small analysis or small KPIs which we can use into our, which will compare our old data with the new things which we are getting into our system. And then reporting. Now reporting is something uh, which is uh, restricted to the end users of the report. Maybe the management or suppose like uh, you are getting your payrolls out, so how much uh, loss of pays and all you have to calculate and number of hours you have worked, you, you could see a graph there which will say you are working an average of 7 hours like for a week or something. So you have a weekly, an weekly analysis and those kind of portals if you can picture out. So basically reporting is, is limited to that where the backend is not visible but the end user can see very well what intent the developer is building upon to generate those reports. So essentially, we have these uh, three things like we talked about uh, views, KPIs and reporting. So here we have benchmarking, like as, as this is a normal benchmarking we see. Like once I deploy the business, uh, business intelligence model running onto my system, or in my organizations, then probably it helps in benchmarking as well. Because as you can compare it with your historical data, you can also compare with the company standards. So basically benchmarking comes in play there. Then is that we can discover data mining, uh, you would have heard of, this is a very uh, talked about uh, topic. Data mining is nothing but analyzing your, uh, your previous data, your raw data to generate trends of things inside your ecosystem. Like if you're a sales company, what are sales trends? If you are a, if you're a product company, how many people are downloading and what stuff. So it can be deployable in any scenario. So there from there is the mining, which will help you discover the patterns and you will understand the things which are going to happen or have happened in the past. Then is the last thing is the predictive analysis. So data mining is what will lead to a predicting of future where when we are once done with the discovery, what discovery of the patterns, we'll probably have to action over them and to make it actionable you can probably uh, heading to the future predictions which we can do on the basis of the mining we have done. Now uh, uh, a bit more of uh, intent on this uh, data. So we have, uh, anybody have heard of OLAP or OLTPs? Yeah. Yeah. So actually OLTP is an online tra uh, online transaction uh, processing. Now there, in, uh, somebody will ask what is the difference between an OLTP and an OLAP? Anybody who, who wish to answer actually? OLAP versus OLD, what might be the difference? Okay. Anybody answer? 
I will tell you. So OLDP is actually uh, the main structural difference is there. First of all, the main difference is structural. OLDPs are made into simple relational models, which are which are uh, planned to to interact on a very regular basis, like like maybe ten times a minute, maybe. So it's like transactional. It has all the transactional information. On the other hand, the OLAP data is managed into queues. Queues are generally we we can't do an SQL query actually. Cubes and table, what difference is there? Cubes are generally three dimensional cubes as you can imagine. It could have more than three domains actually inside it. We can have in a cube. So actually it's a multi-dimensional data which we will be using for analysis. Because once we head on to uh, analytical uh, thinking onto the data which we have, we are actually seeing that uh, the data needs to be uh, compared on basis of many vectors. Like suppose we have a vector called product, we, we have a region, and we have uh, suppose a store. So we cannot do that into a table. Putting a lot of join actually will, will, will collapse the system. And inside your, uh, like it's just a server, it, you, will have, you would have already attached a server to it. Like you know, uh, MS SQL or what? So as far as you have a data source running outside that th that whole ecosystem of Cognos, you can use it into a, any PI tool actually. Because once you have that instance of the queue, so queue analysis, whichever tool, like suppose if if you go to a Jasper, like suppose I will talk about Jasper here. So it's a open source if you have to analyze an OLAP. So you, you need not pay anything, you just download a community edition and you are good to go with an any cube you are manufactured in any tool. So actually you can attach a cube to any of the, like, like you talk about MicroStrategy or Tableau, for that reason any, any you can, as far as you have in your data source, you can actually proceed with any of it. Same query, I can uh, take it out. Yes, yes. Those, that is an MDX query you will be writing, right? Like for the cubes, you will be having, you will slicing and dicing the data, and then probably you will having it in column and row structure, right? That query is called an MDX query, what we use for, uh, for a cube. Same query you can use it across platforms. Because as, as there is an SQL, same way we have an MDX query. So it's all equal on every platform. Now, now, something about unstructured data and structured data. Now, this OLTP and OLAP, what we talked about, those are format of a unstructured data, structured designing, where we have either a table or we have a queue. But if we think for a while, that is just 10% of data we are using. Most of our data is unstructured. That is 90% of the data <coughs> is unstructured. So there comes a scenario where we we just talked about the Prabhu just talked about big data and with IoT. So actually here the big data analytics come into role. But as of that, like uh, you would have heard of uh, big SQL. That's another big data tool for. Uh, analytics uh, doing query over for Google which has come up last year uh, last year uh, so they have come up with this uh, big query so but it is not big SQL so probably it's not yet uh, into picture like we can analyze the big data because as it has a vast amount of deployments and and, and the, the huge processing which Hadoop and all has so uh, right now it's not not in the market or, or I will say it's not been able to uh, actually analyze a big data but actually once we head into future with these concepts so probably next uh, next year or something probably we will be having some some direct tools to actually uh, query uh, query we can do we can do it we can analyze into data marts we can get into tables everything we can do on BI but analytics portion for a uh, Hadoop driven system is not yet in picture, so probably we, we think that might be coming soon into, uh, into play. 
So just a brief history out here. So actually in the beginning, uh, it was uh, in, in 1960s, we had a dissident support system. Then, then in 1980s, they, they have split a few more things like uh, like on an online analytical process and decision systems and executive support system, these came into role. And 1989, finally, the Howard uh, Gartner Group, they have coined this term of business intelligence, where we, uh, we like business intelligence is just an umbrella to keep these all these different types of system into one, one unit, as we call it a BI solution rather than a BI software. So I will talk about few features or few integral parts of business intelligence, what we saw in the beginning. So here first is their reporting. Now, now one in the BI, actually, the main role which, play, which is played by is data. As far as we have data in our system, we can create reports, like I'm talking about a developer's perspective. We can create a report. We can we can create a custom report like you want to see some uh, uh, scorecard or some uh, drill downs over some measures and all. That's quite possible from a developer's end. But actually, once this is released to end users, they probably will be reporting as a business intelligence because they will be seeing the data into a reporting format. So actually, reporting is the tool which the final business users see. So they can be built into several formats. Like this is just a small report which, which shows you the data out there. So reporting is very essential format of for the end users. Now dashboards is what we can say uh, a customized uh, Customize snapshots like suppose I want to show an information about uh, sales in a region. So region could be broken into several different sub-regions. So if I want to see the overall sales in a particular uh, region completely with different different graphs for each of the sub-regions, then possibly I have to navigate through 10 different reports. But now with, with dashboards, we can keep every data which is updated with filters and everything everything working together, we can actually have different views in a sim sim single view. So that is creating a snapshot. Or either you can imagine a scorecard. Where in a scorecard we, we have a scorecard as well as we have our uh, like uh, runs per over and uh, number of balls left, our uh, baller uh, running stats. So we, our dashboard is basically amalgamation of a lot of data together. Uh, related data, of, of course, because we cannot push three different data, like one of sales, uh, one of profits, and, and we cannot just put everything. It's just an informed uh, amalgamation of data. So here is just a small example out here. So here we see a graph. On the right side, we have some uh, tools. There's just a graph there. So possibly this is a dashboard where we have different, different data all coming up, summing up together. Basically, it's an analytics, like a Google Analytics kind of a uh, view. Now, another thing is a self-service. Now, this is, is much in action. Like, people are like, looking forward to the self-service uh, kind of thing. Self-service is basically not relying on anyone. Like, like neither the developers or like if this this is basically uh, in much of talks because the managers and the high level people they cannot actually analyze and write a query to get the data how many how much profit did I get in last month so actually they have deployed like like we have we, when we define a data source like I can define an OLAP source like we talked about an OLAP we can deploy an OLAP into our BI system. And actually, we can create ad hoc reports. Now, ad hoc is what we know what columns are we, are there, but we do not know what what actual columns we need to put into our report. So, actually, uh, in ad hoc reports, we are uh, like the user who is creating ad hoc reports. He or he or she has the liberty to 
have those columns or those fields which are required for that particular analysis. Yeah. So, like this is a small uh, riff out here. So here we see the the graphs are graphs are just changing on the clicks. We can add the add the columns and uh, accordingly the fields have changed and the same the graphs are changing accordingly. So basically, the yeah, this is a snapshot from uh, Jasper of BI, and here we are we are just creating an ad hoc report wherein we have liberty to drag our, drag the columns into two sections that is column and rows, and we can actually put our, our columns and rows in action, and accordingly we can either create a cross tab, cross tab everybody knows right, what is a cross tab? Anybody can tell uh, what is a cross tab? Cross tab is basically uh, a tool, uh, not a tool. I will say it is just a view. Like you have tables, uh, like you would have done pivot tables in uh, in Excel. Basically, it's a pivot table where you have a complete snapshot of the data which you are putting inside your tables or views. I will just show you at the end of this. There, I have a demo, so probably I will show you. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you need to create these queues before you can actually use the BI tool? Yes, yes, of course. Because see, uh, once you have your data into your systems, so probably they will, the OLAP data will be driven by some SQL system somewhere. Because OLAPs are totally relying on the data which is being supplied by a relational system. Once the relational system gives the data, then you probably create dimensions and the data is organized into queues. Once the cubes are created, then probably you can use a <coughs> BI tool. So, so it's not really real time. You no, it's not real time. No, no, it's not. Real, it's that's why it's analytical. Like it, it is required to to uh, get the data and trends from your past. Actually, like suppose you finish like today, until today, uh, there's a nightly suppose uh, update onto the OLAP cubes. So it will give you the data until today. It can't tell you actually tomorrow because for people that are not using BI tools, I think uh, for web application developers, mm -hmm. we uh, create summary tables and uh, HTML exactly. reports and such. So this just gives you more uh, exactly. So this gives much of like view into what you have been doing into like like the data analysis. It's, it's basically the the main motto of business intelligence is to get your Ideal sitting data to work. That's the main main key point of this. Did I answer you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the next thing is data integration. Now here, what we uh, we would have heard of a term ETL many times in our in our professional life. ETL. Yeah, along with the, uh, I mean, which we are talking about right now, about cubes, uh, which we are, at, uh, or in major, I can give you a few examples like Tableau, which is now coming up with a lot of exciting features. Like we just now saw the cross tab, we also have sparse uh, matrix and a lot of other visible tools with which you have the data. Like he was just now suggesting that we have got web apps and we have got dashboards which actually show the data on real time. Similarly, you can also have a data in the database and uh, switching Tableau on top of it and then generate reports on top of that. JasperSoft is with Tipco. The point here is that you need cubes when your data is supposed very vast. Like yeah. your, your data is supposed for big bazaar yeah. or retail chain or big retail chain. Right. You cannot query a real time. Suppose, suppose the dimensions and the measures are limited. Then we can always go for yes, the instant yes. process. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, that's exactly yeah. the point. Yeah. Where it is not understandable, so maybe you have to create. Uh, where it is not understandable, we yes. need to go for cubes. We need to go for tables, and we need to maybe also segregate the data into smaller parts so that we can analyze yeah. it further. We are creating something that is called semantic based uh, right. so you can actually. That's the ETL, uh, ETL entire ETL frame, right? Yeah. Extraction, transformation, and load. Yeah, which also comes into the place where you have semantic layers which actually generate the data. Yeah, we are talking about those semantic layers. Yeah. So, like, 
data marts are generally keeping our data once once we get ETL is basically this for this. Here you see. Here's the whole uh, thing which are doing. Like ETL, now you see like E stands for extract, T for transact, and F for load. Now here, the first thing when we are extracting the data, now actually extraction could be done from a various data sources. I just created few, uh, wrote these few of them like CSV, XLS, RTF, even the MySQL relational system as well. So possibly we can extract our data from a lot of places where, where our ecosystem is very vast. Like you have your reports coming into Excel or your data coming into from RTFs and all. So possibly you can are too much into the market because once you are creating a business intelligence reports or your dashboards, so possibly people are looking for those color coded things and your graphs because see, whatever visually is attractive and uh, visually is very attention seeker, probably people get to understand the data very easily. So we have trend arrows and uh, we have the drill downs and all. So, so this is just a small snapshot of like what advanced analytics look like. Now here you see the color coded things are right there. So this, I have summed up, this is a small uh, illustration staging area. Then you have integration done. That is integration is that you are creating your data marts and all. Then after the data you have, the data integration is carried out. The last data warehouse you will get, it will be an information which will be passed onto, onto the semantic layer where, where we will see our reporting and views and dashboards and all coming up. And actually there the information transforms into knowledge. And, and then for the strategy, once we analyze the trends and all, so possibly this is the whole scenario of the business intelligence uh, software solution. So now have case studies. So the first case study is on Netflix. Everybody would have heard of Netflix, right? Business intelligence to a very large scale because in business in because business intelligence allows them to track a lot of data which they produce on the customer basis and on the titles. Like, like they have various sections, like I have been able to list some of them, like languages. And basically on basis of languages also the data is all divided. So it's in the, these different uh, titles they can actually divide it. And there are over 53 million uh, users which are streaming from the Netflix. So this is a TV series that would have everybody have heard of, like House of Cards, right? So actually, uh, this is acquired by Netflix. If you will see at the bottom, there is written it's by Netflix. So it's it's a, it's a worth hundred million dollars this title. But actually, Netflix won't have bought it for just for a good talk, right? So actually, it's because. <coughs> of the user trends, like like suppose when they release a small cut and, and they probably are looking like uh, they will see uh, uh, what is the trend, how much the users are tweeting or how much uh, users are seeing that. So possibly that way they will give a green light to any particular show, TV show there. Now these are the following trends which are there, like, like playing, pausing, rewinding, and, and, and which device actually you log in, which country you are seeing from, and, and where the scrolling patterns. So, so this is a very detailed kind of a tracking which Netflix does in order to get the like emotions of the person attached with a particular TV series or movie. So this is how the BI, uh, the BI helps Netflix to keep record of things. So you'll be seeing the three different uh, types of uh, graphs here, the, the first one is the percent content consumed or which makes it a market uh, leader and uh, here you see on the top there is a Netflix social report. Now here you will see there is a negative on negative how passionate are people to get the data 
how well is a particular uh, thing, uh, like particular uh, movie or, or a TV is trending. So this will help uh, Netflix to, of course, keep the subscriptions running for the people, allow them to prompt for the users like, you can watch this next, or they can avoid a risk of buying a big flops. And my next case study is on F1 formula racing. Okay. On a particular racing car, there we have a tire pressure and things like that, you see these different data points. So here you see uh, like uh, information from this uh, two cars out here, like Jensen Button and Lewis Hamilton, two drivers, and there is uh, analysis there you see. Now there is one instance I will just quickly take up is that in 2012, Sebastian Vettel uh, got clipped from behind and he was at that time the first, on the first position. But clipping him was took him to the last position. So until this crash and to the pit, he was scheduled pit crew after two laps. So pit crew in, in between of these two laps devised a new altogether simulation for that car. And they under 30 seconds they just loaded that simulation and it stopped for pit crew. And actually Sebastian Vettel won the World Cup that year. So from again from going last to first. So actually this is a big win for BI to analyze your data, how quickly you can retrieve your results. So actually this is a very good case which I'm just saying. So this is how the tracking is done, like you can see one graph for acceleration. Those are heat maps which we call in a system. Now now this is just a small note again, like BI today versus tomorrow. Now actually these are all the links on the top which you see like performance summary dashboard and uh, these are so in a dashboard basically these small small gray sections which are just loading these are the views from a different different reports like these are all separate functioning reports so As far as we talked about uh, this business intelligence into our market, so actually this will lead to further <coughs> evolution. Now these are few points which you are seeing which will be heading to our future uh, usage of business intelligence in our system, like IoT and real time data science, and even more smaller businesses like like as we have more of things in open source and. Java, Java is being the platform which is exploited for creating this BI tools. So we will we will see this like analytics and uh, Hadoop will make the reality. So actually, it was really a great pleasure talking to you guys. And I will just end this on a note. So my suggestion, like these open sources are readily available online. So thinking that this is a very tough thing and not actually using it but that is uh, like my ending note will be like you should actually try one either one of the tools because they are readily available even the cloud storage nowadays are like uh, for Amazon gives one year of cloud uh, subscription fee so probably you can use along with those two things to actually uh, see what BI can do so thank you very much for listening